How do I look? I've had this like skill ever since I was a child to where I can just stand my own gut to where yeah. I do this. What is it, like five months? Uh, it's, it's out there. And I, I'll do this with my wife, like when we go out in public, you know, and we stand there and I'll just do this when she's not looking. Okay, what? are we ready? Yeah. <laughs> don't, don't put that in there, you cut that out. Hi, I'm Burke Holland. And I'm Anthony Chu. And this is five ways to build real-time apps with JavaScript. What's that thing on your head? It's my hair. OK. So what exactly do we mean when we say real-time? What is a real-time application exactly? Yeah, so on the web, that's an application where you don't have to refresh the page to get new data. So like a chat app maybe would be a real-time application? Yeah, or like uh, if you're looking for a stock price and you're looking at it in the stock price ah, updates. Right, so I can find out that I've lost all of my money immediately instead of, you know, a couple minutes from now. Yeah, maybe you shouldn't have invested in these VHS rental companies. It's coming back, man. It's coming back. Thing number one, long polling. What exactly is long polling? Yeah, so I guess before talking about long polling, we should talk about what polling is. And polling is an, an application asking a server for data on a time interval. So maybe every five seconds, every 10 seconds, I will ask the server, um, do you have data? Do you have data? Do you have data? Ah, so it's kind of like going on a vacation with your kids where they're like, are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Yep, and exactly that. would that. be polling. They're polling me. Yeah, totally. Anyway. Yeah. So what is long polling? So long polling is if you... Um, if the application makes a request to the web server, and the web server just hangs on to that request, and then it doesn't actually respond until it has data. Ah, so instead of responding every time it's asked, it just waits until there's a response to give that isn't, we'll get there when we get there. Yep, so you get the data as soon as possible instead of waiting five or 10 seconds. Right, so the solution for all you parents out there is to just not answer the are we there yet question until you're there yet. Exactly. And that's long polling. Yeah. Thing number two, SSE. Isn't that a channel where people watch sports? No, man, that's ESPN. <laughs> Is it that thing where you know when something's going to happen before it happens? No, I think that's ESP. Well, what is ESS? It's SSE, <laughs> and that's server sent events. What is a server sent event? It's a lot like long polling. Um, you're still establishing a, um, you're making a request to the server. And the server is still hanging on to that request. But now every time it has data, it will send you a message um, in, in the response, but it'll never close the response. OK, versus long polling, which closes the response after there is an event. Yep, and then it's up to the client to reestablish that connection again with the new response, or Makes with sense. the new request. I like ESS. Sounds good. Yeah, or SSE is great, too. Either way. Yeah. Thing number three, WebSockets. So what are WebSockets? Hang on. I, I, I don't want that thing on your head anymore. That, what thing? that looks ridiculous. My hair? Yeah, it's hideous. This is my natural hair. Thing number three, web sockets. Let's talk. Nope. Nope. Give me the hair. Web sockets, Anthony. So, web sockets is a different protocol than HTTP, and it allows bi directional um, communication between the client and the server. So, unlike server sent events, where only the server can send uh, messages to the client. Um, in WebSockets, the server can send messages to the client, but the client can also send messages to the server. Well, that makes sense. Why do you think it is they call it a socket? Because it's like plugging something into the wall, and then you establish a connection, and then you get data or electricity flow flowing through it. Huh. Did you know that it's also a golf term, socket? No. It means to shank, as in you shanked the ball. Oh. I thought that's the only way to play golf. Well, it is for you. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never understand. The thing number four are real-time frameworks for WebSockets. So give me an example of like a real-time framework for WebSockets and why would I need one? Yeah, so a couple of popular ones are Socket.io for Node.js. That's probably the most popular one. And another one that I work with a lot is SignalR for ASP.NET. And the reason you will want to use them is instead of coding against the raw kind of um, real-time technologies that we've been talking about before, um, you typically want to work at a higher level. 
So um, what a framework allows you to do is instead of managing the connections yourself, um, you can um, instead work at a higher level. So you can say, send a message to all my connections and you, and you don't have to figure out what, what your connections are and, and, and kind of go through them and send a message to them um, uh, individually. You say, send a message to all the connections and the framework will deal with that for you. And quite often the frameworks will also allow you to um, put connections in the arbitrary groups or rooms, and you can address those rooms or groups um, individually um, as a whole. So you can, for instance, if you want to put everyone in a certain location into a group, you can address everyone that's in a certain state, for example. Cool. So real-time frameworks allow me to write less code and leverage code that somebody else has already written, which makes my life a lot easier. Unbelievable. Thing number five, WebSocket frameworks as a service. What does that mean? Yeah, so instead of writing the application yourself and hosting, it as, hosting the server for all your clients to connect to, um, you can just get that as a service. So your WebSocket connections are between the clients and the service, and all, you, all, all you're in charge of is writing the code. So you're working at another layer of abstraction from the web sockets. Ah, so I can focus on just writing the client portion and the server portion is already taken care of. Yeah, and sometimes the server portion can be serverless, and you can actually use serverless to talk to the service to um, send WebSocket messages. So it'd be clients. things like Azure's new SignalR service. Instead of me writing the SignalR code, the SignalR is already there. All I need to do is configure it and rock and roll. Yep. Speaking exactly of rock that. and roll, you look amazing. I hate myself. I'm Barry Collins. And I'm Anthony Chu. And this is an $8 wig from Party City. And now you know five ways to build real-time apps with JavaScript.